Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to be painting pebbles. So I hope you'll join me. I've got two different ways that I'm going to be painting them. So I've got a couple of bits of paper here. Now this is um, Archer's or Arsh uh, watercolour paper that I've bought in a big sheet and then torn down to a more usable size. And I've got um, my watercolours. Um, I've been working with this little set of watercolours for the last few weeks. Um, so this is a tin that I've bought myself and then I've just kind of curated a little selection of colours and then I change these out every so often to, you know, to allow me to play with new colours because I like playing with watercolour. But you can use any, any watercolour, any watercolour paper. I've got a couple of extra things. I've got, um, I've got a couple of brushes here. So I've got uh, a medium sized round pointed brush, well a fairly large-ish one. Large to medium. Anyway, 10. That's a size 10, but uh, a smaller one would work fine. And then I've got a, a brush for painting little details. This one's really good for painting fine lines. It's called a rigger and it's got a really long brush. And this one's a size three. I've also got my little Posca pen for adding some little white details. I've got some clean water, a paper towel to dry my brush. Um, I've got a pencil, but you don't really need to use a pencil for this, you could just gonna go for it. Um, and then I've got some masking tape as well. I'm gonna tape the edges of my paper. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box to uh, my website, which has a list of the current colors that I'm using. But any that I use today particularly, I'll put in the description box below. I'll start by taping my paper down and I just use whatever masking tape I can get at the at the DIY shop. Um, not the very cheap stuff, but anything else. Um, and I found that if I stick it to the table first, then I can pull it away without it ripping, but it leaves enough stick so that it stays put and so that um, I don't get any kind of paint bleeding under the edges. Kind of just rubbing over the edges as well really helps with that. Now I've got a couple of pebble photos that I've taken on different beaches. I'm going to um, link those in the description box as well and you can use those for your inspiration. I'm not following any of them particularly closely so I'm not going to show you them on screen but they're there if, you, if you'd like them and if you'd find them useful. I'm going to start with drawing and I'm going to draw myself a rough little rock stack. Uh, make sure that some of my rocks are rounder, some of them are more rugged, a nice kind of flat one on the bottom. Of course these are rocks so you don't have to worry about getting them looking right because however they look they'll be right. I just want to make sure it's got like a centre of gravity so they're, they're definitely nicely balanced. Now I can't do this in real life, I'm terrible at balancing rocks. They always fall over. I'm going over it again just with my eraser, but this is just a, uh, a little optional step just to take the weight of those pencil lines out. And then I'm going to pick some colours to, to paint. So I've got a little mixture of kind of pinks and greys and blues in my palette already. Um, I've got some Potter's Pink here that I'm using. If you don't have Potter's Pink, then don't worry about it. Um, you can use any other colours you like. Um, I want some kind of warm pinky toned rocks, some cool bluey toned rocks. Um, if you want to mix up a pink, you can take something really bright, like I've got a magenta here, and just mix some other colours into it. If you mix some blue and some yellow, you'll kind of tone it down a bit. and you can kind of make yourself a nice like subtle pinky tone there that's kind of does a very similar job to this one. And I'm adding lots of water because I want these to be nice and pastely. And I'm painting one rock at a time. And I'm mixing the colors up a little bit, so get a bit more blue in there. So this was, this this is a grey that was a mix of blue and pink and yellow. Just add a little bit more blue in, 
give me a bit more of a cool colour there. I think there's maybe, I'd like that to be a bit paler so I can lift some of the colour out. And I don't want to mess with it too much. Just drop some colour in and then leave it. So I'm going to skip a rock so that I can paint the next one down. Um, and, uh, and not have them bleed into one another. So this one started with some pink. I'm going in with some more of a kind of soft blue. The pink that's already in there is going to make it a little bit mauvey. Now let's do this one here. I'm going to use just this grey. This one's more of a round shape. And let's just put colour on one side and then use water to fill out the rest. So I've got three in there and I'm going to let these dry and then I'm going to paint the rest. So now I'm just going to paint the rest of the rocks in the same way. Um, this one on the bottom I've painted uh, with uh, Moon Glow, which is a lovely granulating colour. It's kind of a purpley tinge to it. So yeah, so I've painted it in lightly and then taken a little bit extra colour and just dot it in in a couple of places, make it look nice and mottled. A little bluey one in the middle. Just take a little bit more colour and drop that in on there as well. A bit more along this bottom edge, I think. And then definitely want more of a grey up here. So a little bit of red in there is going to neutralise that. If it's looking a bit too warm, you can add some yellow into it. Again, I'm going to let this completely dry. Okay, so I've got my rocks painted in. Um, some of these are still a tiny bit wet, but some of them are completely dry, so I can go in and start adding some form to them. So I want to give them some shadow, so I can pick any of my kind of neutrally colours. I might just go for this moon glow out of the box, but you can use a blue, you can use a bluey grey. Um, and I just want to I want to imagine that the light is coming from somewhere. So I'm going to send the light in from up here. So everywhere that's on the bottom and the right hand side of the stones gets a little bit of shadow. So for this one, I can bring in some shadow here. And because it's a, 
it's a pebble, it's a rock, it's going to be quite rough, you can make your shadow an interesting shape and that will kind of make it look like there's um, undulations in the rock. Now if you want to look like a sunny day uh, then you can make your shadow quite strong and give it a quite a hard line. If you want to make it look like it's a softer, uh, like a softer sunny day, like maybe there's a few clouds in the sky, light's a little bit diffused, you can clean your brush off a little bit and just run it along the edge and that'll just soften that shadow. So you still get the shadow there, it's still darker at the bottom. Right, you can add in a little bit more. But you just don't get such a harsh line. And I want to do this on all of my all of my stones. So let's do it on this one. Now this one's a rounder shape, so I definitely want a kind of a smoother, rounder shadow, something like that. Make sure it goes all the way to the to the bottom, be a bit darker, oh, maybe not that dark on the bottom, a bit too much there. Spread that out a bit. There we go, so we've got sunny day shadow and cooler day shadow like that. Okay. That's only one half of the shadow though. We've got the shadows of the kind of the bottoms of the stones, but we need the shadow of the stone above on the stone below and on the ground. So I want to do the same thing again but just make a shadow line from the bottom of the stone onto the ground. And again I can soften that shadow And then I can put a shadow on each rock of the rock above it. Bring it out. Kind of look like it's the shadow of the... So the shadow of this rock here onto the rock below. So this rock here is going to leave a shadow along here. This rock here is going to leave a shadow along here. This one here has a shadow there. And then this last one, just a little bit there. Like that. You can leave those uh, as they are, or again, you can take a soft, damp brush and soften them ever so slightly like that. And I want some detail on some of my rocks, so for some I'm going to take some of that potter's pink on my nice fine brush and I'm going to draw in like this one here. I'm going to draw in some nice kind of circular lines almost. I don't want to make them too regular. Something like that. And then let's put something similar on this one at the top. Maybe they're more kind of 
veiny like lines up here though. This one at the bottom, I want to have some marks on. I'm using a bit more of a blue and this time I'm kind of dancing my paintbrush around a little bit. Make it look like it's got some kind of impurities in there. Oh, that's still a bit wet. Never mind. This one in the middle, I want some of those nice white veins on it. So I've got my white pen here. You could use some uh, white paint, um, like a white gouache or um, um, something like, I've got this PH, uh, PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, which is really good. You could use that on a little brush as well, um, or even a white pencil. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to do some more veiny lines on this one. Kind of heading through the rock like that. Maybe a bit thicker in some places than others. Something like that. This one up here, and I'm going to do some little white dots on this one. Kind of cluster them in different areas. So they don't look nice and they don't look like uniform, they're like polka dots. And I think that could have some darker areas as well. So I can dot just with the tip of this brush. Make it look really nice and rugged, this one. It's got lots of interest in that one. It's a very different type of rock to the smooth pebble. And then this one here, does that need anything? Maybe I'll just put a few little dots on that one. Nothing too much. There we go, there's my little stack of rocks. For my second pebble painting, I'm going to be doing like a top down view, like you're standing on a beach and looking down at your feet. And I'm going to start with a kind of a key, like a pebble that's my fo focal point. Let's make that nice and rounded, sort of smooth. And then I want a few different kind of pebbles coming in at different angles. So we'll have like a long kind of thin one there. Um, let's have another kind of like pear shaped one maybe. Maybe, oh, maybe we'll move that over a little bit. Um, I have like a little, a little one there, another big one just going off the edge and then maybe there's a kind of a bit of a one there, something like that. So I'm just kind of making up these shapes, some of them are rounder, some of them are longer, um, they're, they're all kind of a little bit irregular. Um, so these are all the ones that are kind of on the top. And then I'm going to start filling in the spaces in between. So if I kind of draw and then kind of imagine 
the pebble going around and underneath the things there like that let's have one over here and maybe that would go like that so I've just filled the whole space with little shapes and then in the gaps in between you'll get kind of uh, bits where there's like half a pebble um, there's one here, like that, something like that. So we've kind of filled the whole space with uh, different bits to suggest like different pebbles all sitting on top of one another. And now we're just going to take a variety of like pastel-y shades and I'm going to paint each of these pebbles. So let's start with this one first. And give it like a an outline and then just use water to fill in the center let all that color move around make sure the edges are nice and smooth And it's got a couple of little areas of, of highlight on it, that's okay. In fact, I might add to that light effect by cleaning my paintbrush off a little bit and just using that to pick up some of the pigment on one side. Now I've painted all the rocks in, it's looking a little flat, but we're going to fix that in a bit. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some detail on some of these pebbles to give them a little bit of character. Just in the same way that we did with the rock stack, um, I'm going to add some kind of linear marks to some of them, some of them more kind of spots and splashes and some of them more kind of uh, jaggedy um, textural marks. Now we need to do the bit where the, the magic happens, where it kind of comes to life and it starts to look 3D. And what I want you to imagine is that there's light coming from this direction so that the shadow of each pebble around this side, we're going to paint in now. And that's what's going to make it look, um, give it depth. So I'm not going to paint the shadows on the pebbles for this one um, because I think there's enough going on. What I want to do is to paint the shadow around the pebble, so around the bottom side and the right hand side. And I've mixed up a shadow colour, which I'm just using the Moon Glow out of my palette, um, which is uh, just a kind of the neutral purple colour. But you can use a dark blue, you can mix a blue and a brown together. and. I've got a shadow here, it doesn't look very realistic at the minute. What I need to do is I need to give it a little bit of shape. So where the pebbles are a bit further down, the shadow needs to come a little bit further out. 
like that. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to soften it. So I've just, I've washed my brush ish. I mean, I've rinsed it. There's still some color on there. It doesn't really matter, but I've just taken a lot of the water out of it. So I've got a damp paintbrush now. And if I go around the edges now of that shadow area, I can just soften that shadow out. So it just, it makes this pebble just pop off the surface. So you can just start to see it separated from the pebbles around it now. My shadow colour uh, is quite pale. There's not a lot of pigment in there. Just enough. And I'm going to paint it onto these rocks here. Take the excess water out of my brush and just soften it. So I'm going to do that for all of the rocks that are like on the top. There's no, there's nothing overlapping them. And then I'm going to go around again and just put in little bits of shadows where the rocks kind of underneath are. And as we do that, we'll build up the areas of shadow so that some of the little pebbles are almost going to disappear into shadow as we kind of layer, layer it up. It's just a case of going around one pebble at a time. keep adding shadows and I'm going to make them darker and darker in these little areas where there's like layer upon layer upon layer of pebbles in here. And as I make the shadow areas darker the brighter areas should pop more. Take your time layering up the shadows because you can always go darker, but it's very hard to kind of go back. Finally, I'm just taking tiny little bits of this really dark shadow and painting them into the very darkest corners. The more shadow you paint, the more these kind of pastel colours pop. So don't be afraid to keep going. Do a layer, let it dry, and then add more if you think it needs more. I think this is good for me. I think I'm going to leave this one here. And yeah, I hope that you uh, enjoy this project if you give it a go. So there are my two watercolour pebble projects. I hope that you've enjoyed these. And if you do give them a go, I'd love to see uh, what you do with them. Uh, you can post your work to Instagram and use Lou Rachel Davis uh, somewhere in the post and I will see it. Thanks so much for watching today. And if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, then do subscribe to the channel. If you really like the videos and want to support me to be able to make more of them, then I have a page on Coffee where I post some behind the scenes information 
and uh, where I can accept donations that help me to make more videos like this and to keep them free for you all to watch. This video is part of a season that I'm doing which is all about the seashore, the shoreline and coming up we've got some more seascapes, we've got um, some shell painting, some line of wash paintings of uh, like harbour and boat scenes I've got planned and I really hope that you'll join me for those. So look forward to seeing you for them. Okay, thanks, bye bye.